starting route to Miami International Airport. This trip actually got postponed. I think it was supposed to be back in, in May. And COVID hit and unfortunately every, all travel got suspended. So we put it off to December. It was something that we were all looking forward to in May. And you can just imagine the anticipation that had built up over the months. Guys, I want to say, with the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming here. This means a lot, not just to me, but everybody that you see living here in this country. This is the fifth annual Guatemala Billfish Invitational. It's put on this year out of Pacific Fins Resort, which is on the Pacific coast of Guatemala. A tournament like this is based on the number of releases. A certain number of points are given to sailfish, 100 points for a release sailfish, and 300 points for a blue marlin. So you have to get the leader to the tip of the rod, and it's pretty simple. The highest number of releases wins the tournament. It's not based on weight, it's just based merely on released fish. Last year I fished on multiple boats and this year Ozzy said, you know what, if you get a crew of guys together, you know, just have your own boat, fish with the same guys the whole entire time. And I tell you, the first four guys that I asked to go all said yes. Tommy Thompson. I've never heard somebody laugh at their own jokes so much in my life. He just makes you laugh because he's laughing. Sean O'Connell. Sean's the best at everything. When he gets around the other guys, you know, it gets to be a contest, so it's fun. Philip Weikert, he can be pretty serious, so I knew the only thing we needed to do is, you know, crack a couple beers and, and he'd loosen up for sure. Jackson Griffin. Jackson is quick-witted. He comes with one-liners so quick. You know, he was a car salesman back in the day, and oh, you can tell. Had four lines in the water at one time. What we're going to do is we're going to troll four teasers. We're going to probably have three squid chains and then a blue marlin lure out. We're going to have four ballyhoo trolling four naked ballyhoo. The long riggers are just back there for the blind bites. Sometimes you will see the splash, but normally those are the blind bites. Now the short baits, those are the guys that really have to be paying attention. And you have to be listening for the caps and you have to be looking at those teasers and you have to be ready to react. Eight o'clock, let's go. Eight o'clock, let them drop. We're constantly sitting there with our, you know, the reels in free spool, hands on the line. Sometimes we will pin them down to a clip on the rub rail to help hold it down. But again, you have to be constantly ready. And what we're gonna do is with those four positions in the cockpit, we're gonna rotate every 30 minutes. All right, guys, this is our scorecard, all right? Fish caught, fish missed, Sancochos, F-ups, <laughs> and shots, all right? So What's the middle one mean? Sancocho. What's that mean? Means when it comes back with just a head. No bueno. <laughs> A lot of times in tournaments you get money involved and it, it just takes the fun out of it. And this is meant to be more of a fun tournament for the camaraderie, for the awareness, and, and not so serious. And that's what I like about it. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Not here. <laughs> well, it's 8.30. So it's 8.30 and I, 830, I couldn't help but notice that half your crew are drinking. <laughs> I know. They made it 35 minutes and the alcohol, the beer started. There's water and beer, sir. Yeah, you, we gotta remember, I guess, that you're working, but they're not, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. right. They're part of they're, they're on vacation. Oh! Right long! We had our own little contest going on, whether it was who messed up the most, who missed the most fish, who drank the most beers. You got a bit? Yeah. Dump it to him, dump it to him. It was just a way of us to keep track of, of one another and just kind of probably more a way just to razz each other and just bust each other's humps over, you know, what they were doing wrong or what they were doing right. Fish hey, I got the Ocho. Oh, oh no, no. he's got a Ocho. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tommy got an ocho, which means he came back with just a head, which is definitely a faux pas, apparently. Right here, right there. Right there. We're so happy. All you're focused on is the next one. You know, you don't, you don't even enjoy the one you just had. You're on to the next one. We're happy to be on the board, though. It took us 39 minutes. I got in the morning, two hours into it, and holding that in the rigger, I just felt them come right up. That's what it's all about. This is why you come down here. Good job, guys. There's two things you want to hear on a boat. I'm bit and caught. And those are the two things that you want to yell out. I mean, I'm sitting there with my finger on the spool just, and you just feel that, just that subtle thump, take it out of your hand. And, I'm bit, I'm bit. You know, and the, everybody's tension just peaks up. And then also when you're fighting that fish and you just get there and you just stretch out and you just, just get that leader through the tip, you know, release. That's the best feeling. You better not be sensitive and come to a place like this with a group of guys because you'll have your feelings hurt really quick. I think Tommy got me pretty good once. I know we got Jackson pretty good once where everybody, even the captain was in on it. But that's why you're there. That's the fun that you're having. You want to go with a group of guys that you can bust each other humps the whole entire day and just continue to have fun at it. Build up, Phil. Check that bait. Phil, 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 Philip had the hot hand. I knew he would. Whether it's the feel for it, the way where he's presenting the bait or how he's presenting the bait, he was the hot hand. And he does this all the time, so I expect nothing, nothing less. With a new boat, new crew, a new destination, a new fishery, if you can control one variable, bringing your own rods down, which you don't need to do, but which what we did, it helps. You know, we, we know the line, we know the, the hooks that we're using, you know, we're rigging them with ringer swivels. We're doing all these things to just put our minds at ease and give us one variable that we're in control of. That's short! Easy, Tommy, easy. Woo! 
Doubled up. Those came in on the teasers. Tommy was the middle of the pack the whole time. He had pretty good hookup ratios. I don't know if he was seeing as many, but you know, he's, he's again, a good angler. And Tommy was kind of just right there with me, just kind of middle of the road, clean up. Is that your first one? Yeah, for today, yeah. Another the Benita, but heck yeah. Woo. Oh, look at the drag on. Don't stop him, don't, don't stop him. When he's running away from you, don't slow him down. Good job, Woo, Tommy. Well, I waited all day long, but I'm hanging in there now. Tomorrow I need less in these categories uh -huh. and more in this category, okay? This is correlating to this and the lack of this. He's an anomaly. He's a unicorn. He's on our team for a sole purpose of this. This is merely... Just a, a hiccup. Yeah, this is what you get with this. That's this just an average on this end. <laughs> That's the real deal. <laughs> This That's is an average. This is a daily average. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Yozuri makes the best line, leader, and lures in the world. A ton of great products come from this company, but there's a few that I rely on every day. I rely on the Super Braid. Highly resistant to abrasion, easy to cast, very visible. This is a go-to every day when I'm guiding. For fluorocarbon, I rely on their top knock. A durable, abrasion resistant, easy to tie knots, low memory, a go-to product for me for fluorocarbon from Missouri. Now, as far as hard baits, it's hard to beat top water plugs, especially low light conditions or when searching for fish. The first is a Hydro Pencil. It's a little bigger profile. This comes in a five inch. It's easy to cast, easy to work to get that back and forth walk the dog action. Very effective when searching out uh, predator fish. Something a little bit different new from them is the 3D inshore twitch baits. These are subsurface baits. Really what I like about these is this looks just like a bunker. So whether you're inshore, offshore, this thing throws a mile. Um, you can easily throw it 4,500, 5,500 size reel. Anything from, you know, 20 pound braid, 30 pound braid, this thing is gonna throw. It has the weight to, to get out there. So another go-to for me. Something a little bit smaller profile when throwing with a little bit lighter tackle is their new 3D top knock pencil. This comes in a four inch variety of colors, great for inshore. As soon as this thing hits the water, you can get that walk the dog action. Again, low light conditions, fish in sea walls. Um, I really rely on this when snook fishing, jack fishing, even offshore. Whatever it is, you should always have a top water plug tied onto one of the rods ready to fire out there. So when you're looking at Uzuri products, remember that the Super Braid, the top knot leader, and these hard baits are my go-tos on a daily basis. Tip up a little bit, tip up a little bit now. Now just go tight, go tight, go tight, go tight, go tight, go tight. Go tight. Jump it back. Well, Jackson started slow. He didn't have any experience with this type of fishing. Midway through the first day, he said to me, I've never done this before. He's never trolled Bally here before. And I'm like, oh my God, why did I bring this guy? Day two just started. Jackson had a screw up right out of the gate, but he redeemed himself. Woo! Whatever it was he was doing wrong in the beginning, he quickly adjusted and somehow he got the hot hand and, and he passed me right by. Now keep reeling, Jackson. Keep reeling. Stay tight. Woohoo! There we go! Good job, boys. First one of the day. Let's get another one. This is a sailfish tournament. 
Not a redfish tournament. You're just now telling me that? Sean got caught in maybe a bad position in the rotation. Sean's one of the best anglers that I know. So I, I know it wasn't based on that. He's just, you know, bad luck. He's an Irish boy. You think he'd come with the luck of the leprechaun, but the dude just, he was just positioned badly or bad luck. But who can come to Guatemala and get as few shots as, as Sean? I don't know. The, the boy's definitely got to come back for some redemption. on time today. We're getting that fill up today. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Yeah, man, you know. That's the only way to get Five a bite. It's somewhere, George. I cannot be the only guy on the boat not to drink a beer. I don't drink beer. I'm drinking a beer. I have to. I have to sacrifice a little, pour a little of the fish, Bless the rod and hope for the best. Sailfish are so aggressive. They will come into a spread with their bills halfway out of the water, just mad, looking for something to eat. Oh, he just came up. There he is, I got bit. Woo hoo! Hey, he just had to make the move. <laughs> we just made a power move. Kind of bailed on the tournament, uh, on the tournament and just fun fishing now, really. Well, the tournament has boundaries. The bite's outside the boundaries. We just decided, you know what? All the cool kids are playing outside the fence. So we decided to go play with the other kids. Scrap the tournament. We're just fun fishing now. Sometimes you get that fish so close, you can see that leader right there. It could be 10, 15, you know, five feet away. It gets to be this stalemate sometimes where you, you have to put more pressure on the fish, but you don't want to break them off. It's, uh, it's nerve wracking, but it's exciting at the same time. And you know, you just, want to, you just want to sometimes just stretch out just another foot just to get that leader there. But, I tell you, these specific sails are so strong. If they turn, if they start to make a dive, you could be there for an hour fighting one fish. So what we try to do is you try to get those fish in as fast as possible. You try to keep those fish on the surface. You want him up top. You want him jumping. The more time he's spending on the surface, he's, you know, he's, he's wasting his energy. And as soon as we can back down to him before he dives down, the faster we're gonna get a release. To everybody there, it meant something to, to do the best that they could. We didn't place, 
we caught, I don't know, 35 fish in three days, which was good. But there was guys that caught, I don't know, 50 or 60, and that was a lot better. We were kind of out of the contention, just you know, resigned to the fact that we were just going to have fun with it. And that takes some pressure off. But you know, we look forward to going back. We want to, we want to win. You know, we'll be back next year, and hopefully we'll take home a trophy. Amal, Victor, Daniel, Michael, please come to the front. You have earned yourselves the first place at the fifth Billfish Invitational in Guatemala. It's got to be a great feeling with your name of your team being called, and you walk up in front of everybody and present it with the, you know, this gorgeous trophy. And just to realize that you were best for those three days. You, you had the most number of shots or the, the best hookup ratio. You caught the most amount of fish. That's, that's gotta be a great feeling. And I, I saw it on the faces of the guys that won. The vibe here has been incredible. We're coming back. And Niels, thank you so much. Ozzy, thank you so much. I, I, I have no words. Thank you guys. time ago from a good friend you never beat company you let company win so he's my company I gotta do the right thing <laughs>